um, two amazing women. We we're having a conversation before we started how if you want to get anything done, you have to have women at the table. So I am excited to have Dr. Hapsula and Sue Escobar here, and we're going to talk about how all things health equity. And so um, it is important for me to say this. Uh, welcome. Buenos dias. Bonjour or bonsoir. Um, so I think it's important for me to recognize all of our Caribbean um, friends and family here. So again, welcome so much for, uh, thank you so much for attending our health uh, nutrition outreach program. So I am going to pass it along to Dr. Hevzula. I do encourage you to engage in conversation via chat or the Q&A box. And then at the end, we'll have an opportunity to go over some of the questions that you have. Once again, thank you so much. And then if you have, take out your cell phone, text maybe a friend or two, send them the Zoom link because it's not too late for them to join because this is really gonna be some impactful information to get us all really living healthier lives. Thank you so much. Thank you again, Elkin. First of all, it's such an honor, a privilege and a pleasure to be here. Special gratitude to you, Elkin, for all the work that you continue to do for diversity, equity, and inclusion. And a special thank you to United Way for always supporting our health equity work. It's because of you we're able to amplify the voices of our community and to really make a big difference in the outcomes that we're seeing. So with everyone joining us today, we're gonna to walk you through what we're doing at the Dr. Kieran C. Patel College of Osteopathic Medicine. This is a project that's very close to my heart. I am born in Trinidad. I will tell you, we have a very inclusive team. Today is extra special because I'm joined by Dr. Escobar, also from our College of Osteopathic Medicine. She's in the Department of Nutrition. Together, we are a power team ready to present some of our Caribbean foods, some of the research generated Caribbean foods, and find some small ways to modify and make some tweaks so that we can all live healthier. During the pandemic, especially, I'm a practicing internist, and I'll tell you that we're seeing a surge in diabetes and related negative outcomes, heart disease as well, and stroke, including the evolution of certain cancers. So nutrition, fitness, healthy living has such a strong impact on your health and wellness. And we are bringing our hearts and soul to this because we want you and your families to be healthy. I'll give you a little bit about my background. I am from Trinidad, as I mentioned. I am at the Karen C. Patel College of Osteopathic Medicine. I am thrilled to serve as chair of the Department of Internal Medicine. I started the Caribbean Diaspora Health and Nutrition Outreach Project when I served actually as the Assistant Dean for Community and Global Health at the other program, the Ever Medical School there at NSU. And I have served as a past president of the American Medical Women's Association. While I was there, I founded the Preventive Medicine Task Force and in that capacity worked with the Surgeon General's Office to promote the National Prevention Strategy. I am a mom of four. I've been married for almost 23 years. We have three daughters and a son and balancing all of those things um, gave me some good content to write two books on work-life balance and empowerment for women and leaders. I also host Mission Critical Health and my focus is on oncology. And I essentially tease out some of the latest scientific and medical advances in the oncologic fields and by interviewing other physician experts in the field and allow that to easily get translated into better patient outcomes. I'm also a board mem member with the American Diabetes Association and with the March of Dimes. And it's an honor now to have Dr. Escobar introduce her background. Well, thank you very much. And thank you for everything that you do is truly amazing. I am registered dietitian, nutritionist, uh, Dr. Sunuri Escobar. And um, so I have two sides. I have the academic side, where I am the director of the dietetic internship program in adjunct faculty at, the, at NOVA. And I teach mostly right now uh, future doctors of America. So I, I'm very happy that they're so interested in nutrition because I think when, they, when we work together uh, as, as a group, as a team, we can do great things. Now, in the other side, I, I love media. I've been a spokesperson for many, many years. I've been on uh, the top uh, shows for uh, morning shows, uh, mostly for the Hispanic uh, market. So Despierta America and Telemundo, Un Nuevo Día. So um, it's, it's always been fun to do nutrition segments, usually in the kitchen, usually cooking, because I think it's important that we understand that research is there, 
but we have to figure out what to eat. And that's my job, translate science into like delicious food that we all will eat. And today we'll be talking about some really tasty food. So uh, and on top of that, I love running. I love running uh, marathons and I love traveling. And one thing I do is I take uh, cooking classes. Every, every place I go, I take one cooking class. And now my, my little boy joins me and uh, he started cooking as well. So I'm very excited about that. He is uh, half Latino and uh, half Caribbean. Thank you so much for that, Dr. Escobar, incredible. So yes, we're going to be making you very hungry towards the end of this. <laughs> Some of the traditional foods and Dr. Escobar is gonna help us to tweak those. And we are gonna follow up this session with a live, well not a live, but it's gonna be a live cooking demo, maybe a recorded cooking demo, probably in the same virtual format to get us all interacting in one way or another. So we have a very big team of members, and I will tell you, this is a labor of love for all of us. This is volunteer work, but it's scientific research, and it is also us having a strong dashboard to amplify the voices of our Caribbean community. This is all of what you're going to see today is what was generated from focus groups that really highlighted some of the insights and cultural perceptions and cultural uh, content, really, from the Caribbean community here in the South Florida region. So a big thank you to all of our team members. I think on our call today, we have Anita Gorachan and Louis Corona Lang, who's been with me for the longest time in the very beginning stage of this project. Please pay attention to the chat box. They will be sharing some of the surveys, some of the Caribbean health surveys, for example, and intercept surveys that help us really evaluate the materials themselves. So we encourage you to participate in those and have your voice amplified. We have many community partners who are part of this. I mentioned the United Way and how grateful we are. They're actually, we have a link to all of our translated materials on their website. And you see our list of partners here has expanded into a larger community. And this is an incredible way for us to build synergy and together with a like-minded approach, we can help to improve patient outcomes and improve the health of our community. I'm going to share with you a short video on the actual project itself, okay? I'm Dr. Farzana Hafizula. I'm current chair of the Department of Internal Medicine and principal investigator of the Caribbean Diaspora Healthy Nutrition Outreach Project. The Caribbean community in South Florida is one of the most diverse populations in America, with more than 1.6 million immigrants who've chosen to make their lives right here in the Sunshine State. In fact, Four out of every 10 Caribbean immigrants to the United States lives here in Miami-Dade, Broward, and Palm Beach counties. We speak English and Spanish, French and Creole. We have a range of faiths and values and traditions and cultures. But for all this variety, there's one thing we all have in common, health risks. Members of the Caribbean diaspora are disproportionately more susceptible to obesity and related diseases, including diabetes, heart disease, hypertension, and stroke. Some even have a higher risk of certain types of cancer. Fortunately, many of these diseases are preventable through quality education, awareness building, and lifestyle support. Research done by and for those of us in the Caribbean community has shown that culturally relatable messaging, messaging that models healthful eating and exercise practices can have a measurable impact on our health and well-being. In fact, our Caribbean focus research made possible by a Nova Southeastern University grant found that as many as 92% of those surveyed reported that culturally appropriate materials can positively influence the choices they make. This research was so compelling that it won the award for the best faculty and staff led project at the Baylor College of Medicine's Health Equity Research Showcase. The strength of this research is why we developed the Caribbean Diaspora Healthy Nutrition Outreach Project. It was created as an extension 
of the Go Slow Woe campaign, a multi-agency effort that was first introduced to some Florida in 2015 to bring essential food and wellness information to underserved communities. The principles behind Go Slow Wo have been rigorously studied in trials across the country, and they have been found time and again to produce remarkable results. Significant reductions in obesity, increased physical activity, greater fitness, all at a cost that can be surprisingly low. The Caribbean Diaspora Healthy Nutrition Outreach Project built on those principles, tailoring the Go Slow Wo content to reflect the tastes, expectations, and experiences of our Caribbean community. All of the culturally appropriate Go Slow Wo pieces we've developed use research data generated from Caribbean focus groups that captured visual and graphic preferences, cultural insights, and relevant content coded by the Go Slow Woe's traffic light motif to signal healthier choices. There's green for the Go foods that should be chosen frequently, yellow for the slow foods that should be eaten in moderation, and red for the woe foods that should be consumed rarely, all based on their nutrients, sodium, fat, and sugar content. Then we couple that with guidance on exercise to form a well-rounded health improvement program. To make the greatest impact, we produced a whole range of materials for use across the community, flyers and signage, digital flipbooks and handouts, and more in English, Spanish, and Creole. Our goal is to reach as many of our neighbors as possible with language and images that are personally meaningful, providing evidence-based insights that we can use to see real health and wellness improvements. For more information about our efforts, visits Nova Southeastern University's Caribbean Health Initiative online today and learn how you can partner with us to enhance the lives of so many. And if you're ready to contribute to our efforts directly, text NSUCDHNOP to 41444. Well, that was a wonderful introduction into the beginning stages, the first, it, it, the first or the primary parent project, really. And now I'm happy to say we've received continuous funding, and that allowed us to expand from just Broward County into the Tri-County area and now beyond that. Florida is home to 41% of all of the Caribbean immigrants here in Florida. So this research sort of set the dashboard, set the stage for us to continue to have culturally appropriate programming for our Caribbean community. So as I mentioned, we focused on Haiti, Jamaica, Trinidad and Tobago, Cuba, and the Dominican Republic based on the demographic distribution of Caribbean diaspora residents. And that has now expanded to include all the Caribbean islands in the Caribbean region. So the, the flyers I'm about to show you were all generated, the themes, the components, the content, the layout, the color scheme, every aspect of it. If you read the original research paper, you will see that all of those themes were generated straight from the focus group data. So here is a word cloud that came from those focus groups. Everything was divided up. We had nutrition experts on our grant partnership team. They teased through this information with us. And they even looked at exercise components and came up and summarized different areas. We're able to integrate all of the Caribbean data across the islands because there was such overlap. So I'm going to share with you some of the insights that were teased up from the research alongside the focus groups that generated the information to help us refine and redefine the Go Slow Wo materials, we also looked at social determinants of health. So that allows us to know mental health, housing, financial health in one way or another, all of the non-health aspects that have a factor in health outcomes. We recognized that there was a dearth, there was basically a lack of disaggregated data. You know, there were larger categories of race and ethnicity but nowhere in the data could we tell that someone was from a particular Caribbean island 
or from mixed Caribbean countries, that affects your health risks. That affects how you're able to manifest and at least manifest complications of specific diseases like diabetes. We also realized that in this particular research first phase, the average age of our participants was about 43.1. So that matched up with Generation X, who typically appreciate convenient access to care. However, we found that the majority of our participants actually preferred getting health information instead of online, they preferred it from their own clinicians. So in the next stage of our research, we're looking to see if some of the primary care physicians are actually from the Caribbean, because then that absolutely promotes more diversity in health and medicine. It's imperative that we ensure that the help the clinical community is really reflective of the community that they're serving in one way or another. There is a connection in that regard. Mental health or some other aspects that we'd like to follow up on. And of course, ensuring that we capture a larger data set regarding foods, cultural perceptions and belief systems and how that plays a role into the health aspects. Moving forward, I mentioned in the video here talking about how the foods were categorized. Dr. Escobar is going to talk a little bit more about that. So taking the complexity of content that we did receive, this is one of the larger educational posters that came out where we have the go foods, which are the healthier choices, rich in nutrients and healthy, the slow foods that you don't have to have several times a week. I know a lot of us recognize some of the foods we enjoy, the curry goat, the oxtail, you see the roti over there, some Jamaican patties and cheese, the plantains, you see some malta down here and some other things. Dr. Escobar, do you have any comments on this particular poster itself and ways that we can incorporate it, but ensure that we're still maintaining a healthful lifestyle? No, I love this because it's very easy to know. So every time that we eat, what are the, food, the foods that we want to consume most of the time? And, and that's the goal foods, you know, things like eggs. And eggs have an interesting story because back in the 70s and 80s, which corresponds with the, the generation X, I guess, uh, when they were like little and growing up, um, we, we change and we start saying like eggs are bad. When in reality, eggs could be very healthy for you. And that's a food that you can consume several times a week. And like that, like uh, all your proteins, all your uh, legumes, your beans, your fruits, your vegetables are things that, has, that should be part of your everyday diet. Exactly. And then the, the slow foods are things that are very tasty, very good, but you need to consume like just like here and there. So they fit into an overall diet. And of course, there's always a way to make it a little healthier. So you can consume it a, a little bit more often. And then there's foods that um, they could be part of your diet. They just cannot be part of your every day or your every meal. Exactly. And the sugar and the salt content and the portion sizes, we're definitely going to talk about a little bit more. Towards the end of this presentation, you're going to see some amazing pictures of some of the dishes that you'll recognize. I'm going to tell you some small modifications to make those healthier versions. So these materials that you see here, the NSU Caribbean Health website is being currently worked on now, but they are accessible through the United Way's health uh, website. And we'll make sure that you receive some links as well a little bit later on down the road. The other way that the foods were presented, and remember, the Go Slow World platform was here in Broward County since 2015, it was used. This is a first Caribbean-centered version of it. And again, it came from the research that we did together as a team. The foods themselves were then classified, and you notice that there are some strong points to each of the categories. For example, okra, helping your bones, and it's high in vitamin K and calcium. Eating limes may help your skin, skin complexion. Remember, eating it, not putting it on your skin. Stops for healthy hearts and avocado is like your it's nature's butter, you know, it's excellent for your skin, hair, and eyes, and it does help you lower cholesterol. But even if you look through all the bullet points here, remember portion control is very, very important. So while they may have these health benefits, you still have to watch the quantity. And Dr. Escobar, I'm sure, will be commenting on that. The orange foods, for example, vitamin E, the papayas that are in season now may reduce some cancer risk, but we do need more study. We need more study to see exactly some of those chemical components and have human trials that are safely designed to really look at that in detail. You may often hear if you are undergoing any treatment for cancer, for example, you might find the term superfood being used in one way or another. A lot of these foods may have 
deep colors to them. They have, they're rich in antioxidants. They have other chemicals that reduce what we call free radicals, which can sometimes prevent a cancer gene from turning on and promoting the cancer process in one way or another. So I'm gonna make sure that you have time to review some of these in detail and go through each of the categories. These are going to be in digital booklets on the website itself. Moving forward, the other way we presented a lot of the information was looking at calorie content. So many of us grew up on Milo, right? Some of us would drink it with whole milk and add extra sugar, maybe eat it straight from the can. <laughs> you know, we have some fond memories of those things. But imagine 550 calories, about 50 teaspoons of sugar in just one serving of Milo, right? And many of us had fresh fruit smoothies. Again, these foods were identified in our focus groups. If you added condensed milk to that, and many of the Caribbean islands did that as well, you're up to 800 calories. You just drink a nice ice cold glass of water. It's refreshing and zero calories. <laughs> it can also fill you up. Look at guava pastries. One guava pastry equal to 10 guavas. Imagine only having 37 calories versus 379 calories, right? 10 times the amount. And look at fresh papaya versus a papaya smoothie. Again, the differences are tremendous. These calories, they add up. I encourage you to use an app if you have one to help track your calories for the day. Dr. Escobar, do you have any other tips or thoughts on that piece? Because sometimes it runs ha. Well, I mean, there's simple changes that we can make. Um, Honestly, coming from Mexico or shakes, fruit smoothies are basically just milk and, and the fruit. And then my mom being my mom, of course, he will use bananas or just some dates to, to like make it sweet. So that turned out to be like a quite a healthy breakfast. But <laughs> fast forward, I was in Jamaica and I was like, okay, you know, let me have like a, a, a shake for, for me and my son. And then, you know, of course he loved it. And then I drank it and I'm like, this is like pure sugar, what is this? And then I found out that it has condensed milk. So just, uh, you don't have to give up your favorite foods. You just have to, if you like it as they are, have it less often, but you can make modifications so you can have it as often as you want to. Exactly. And those small changes will have very big impact. It is really not emphasized enough how important those small changes are. And that combined with some regular physical activity, which we'll talk about in a moment, really can make some, a world of difference really. And if you will either have a complication to diabetes, if you're already, already diagnosed with diabetes, or if you may even manifest diabetes at all, you know, or heart disease, or have strokes down the road. A lot of the foods and sugars and foods actually accelerate what we call an inflammatory process. So it actually speeds up the process of laying down cholesterol plaques in the arteries or laying down inflammation cells that can cause you to have heart attacks and strokes and you know how many of your organs have uh, unhealthy effects. So here we talk about cinnamon. A lot of us love cinnamon in a lot of our foods. It's actually shown to reduce mm -hmm. inflammation, helps improve some of the blood sugars and might even work to repair some of the damage in different areas. So if I tell you for me, when I'm drinking coffee or if I have a little cafecito, I use a stirring, I use a little, yeah, the cinnamon stick is my stirring rod and I leave it in there. Or if we're making a percolated coffee, I put it right in there before the hot water comes down on the percolated brown coffee and it flavors it and you have another beautiful way to have cinnamon inserted if you're not allergic. <laughs> and we talk, and, yes. go ahead. Yeah, and uh, what I want to add is because you have so much flavor, you don't need the extra sugar. I mean, you could add sugar, but you don't need like five tablespoons. You might be fine with just like a half of a tablespoon or a teaspoon. So it's a very easy way to keep the flavor, but balance out the calories. Exactly right. And Dr. Escobar, you already mentioned about eggs. We in the Caribbean, yes, it's, it's almost a no-no. We think, oh, it's very unhealthy. It's going to cause high cholesterol and heart disease. But three to six eggs a week, it's okay for your heart health. It's actually a very rich source of vitamins and it promotes bone and immune health. And it's a good source of some of the minerals that are needed for you to heal well. Mm -hmm. here and avocado. Yes, go ahead, Dr. Escobar. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, and the protein that uh, is included with the eggs. It's a really excellent source of protein. And if you think about it, if we live uh, in the United States, most of us will eat enough protein. That's not the issue, but eating enough protein at breakfast is an issue. 
And uh, like, you know, very few breakfast items naturally are rich in protein, like eggs are. Two eggs, 14 grams of protein, and you're almost done with the entire protein needs of the morning. Exactly. And it also helps you to feel more satisfied. So you're not going to get those cravings or those hunger pangs a little bit later on where you're reaching for a snack. So it's, this is the way I know I start my morning. I definitely have those eggs and I would put some avocado on there. I know in Trinidad, we call it zavoca and mash it up and add a little bit of salt, some pepper and garlic and some, some scotch bonnet peppers in there and we're good to go. So we're gonna, no. we're gonna, oh, oh, sorry. Dr. Nabzula, I just wanted to quickly say, um, so first in, in Haiti, we call it zavoca too. Yes. <laughs> and also I feel really good right now because I started to, alternate with my coffee and just do cinnamon like tea. I'll take the cinnamon sticks yes. and I'll put them in there. And then, um, so thank you for reaffirming that I've been making some really good healthy choices lately. We're proud of you, Elkin. That's incredible. <laughs> There's always room for cinnamon in your life. <laughs> and you know, it's funny you would say Zabaka's Haitian. I learned that during the focus group. So I'm, I'm just excited to see how much integration we have among our islands. <laughs> And then of course, portions, that's important, right? So while we know that certain foods are healthy, how much of it we eat plays a very big role in the overall calorie content. If you consume or you eat more calories than you burn, you gain weight. It's an equation, it's a very simple equation. There are other things that are involved in how you hold on to some of those calories in different ways, but we'll definitely save that for another session. So look, many of us love mangoes. When mangoes are in season, most of us don't just eat one. One mango alone, and this is not a large mango, it's about 200 calories, 200 calories. If you compare that to a bowl of brown rice and some veggies and maybe some healthy proteins, you're well under what you normally would consume. And I will tell you something generated from the Caribbean focus groups, many of the health flyers used objects to help us to decide what is a good portion. Like they used baseballs or hockey pucks and different things. Our Caribbean residents did not like those objects at all. They would rather have a divided plate like this telling us that half of it needs to be vegetable and fruit, a quarter of it protein, and the rest whole grains. And then you decide how you're going to fill that up with the foods that are categorized by the go slow world. And for children, divide it into thirds. And again, it's the same kind of thing, you know, fruits and vegetables, whole grains, and a third for the protein in that sense. So Dr. Escobar, any comments on the portion size? Oh, absolutely. I think that's one of the most important things. I mean, many times I have clients that eat very healthy, but yet they're not where they want to be in terms of weight or health. And when we look at the portion sizes, the portion sizes are larger than, you know, they should be. I mean, every time we go out in a restaurant, portion sizes tend to be large, unless you're in, a, in certain restaurants where portions are way too small. <laughs> but uh, overall, they're very large, and so that's what we used to. But when we really start understanding our portion sizes, just having our weight under control becomes a lot easier. And uh, in terms of the plate, I, I love it. Um, I think the only thing that I will add is that we look at, at filling a part of our plate with whole grains, a part of our plate, but that also can include root vegetables and it can include other carbohydrates, such as like beans. I love using beans and legumes as my carbohydrate because they have both protein and carbohydrates and a lot of fiber and vitamins and minerals. So great yeah. source of, of um, the carbs. And the beautiful part is all the Caribbean islands we studied all have peas, beans, and legumes in one way or another. So yes, some of the foods at the end, and then we're going to talk about ways to modify those to make it healthy. So of course we couple the nutrition choices with exercise. And I will tell you that some of the education materials that were out there already were swimming and football, some of the things that just did not align with Caribbean culture. So again, these were generated from our focus groups. Jumping rope, walking with your family, for example, you burn a whole 150 calories from just 30 minutes of first walk. That actually increases your mood. It reduces the incidence of depression and anxiety. It helps you to stabilize some of the metabolic parameters in your own body to stave off diabetes and heart disease and stroke. And look at this, jumping rope for 10 minutes. That's equivalent to one mile of walking or jogging. So maybe for Halloween this weekend, instead of us eating the candy, maybe we just jump rope <laughs> and have some fun incentive behind it. This is a way you can improve coordination, reduce weight, increase heart and lung health in so many different ways. And here are some of the other activities that we generated. Dancing, 
put some music on, just move. So if we're sitting here on the computer now, move your legs, move your arms, make sure that you are not sitting sedentary for many hours in the day. If you have the access to walking outside or walking in place, maybe you lift your computer up on a higher desk and you're able to move a little bit more rather than sitting in a chair. If you have access to a treadmill and you're able to have a desk on that treadmill, go ahead and work from right here. Make sure you follow all the safety precautions. Park in the very furthest spot if you can and then walk to where you need to go to. Play these games. Here we have this pandemic we're dealing with. So if we work together and move together, we're going to be helpful. So we have some surveys that are going to be coming into the inbox now for you to evaluate some of our materials. We want to hear your opinion. This is our, your chance to have your voice amplified and to be a meaningful part of this research. So please, you're going to have intercept surveys in English and Spanish. The Creole version will be coming very soon. And then we have the community health questionnaires. That is important because we're gauging the incidence of diabetes. We're looking at social determinants of health. So we're looking to see where policy changes need to be made and where resources need to be aligned. We're also looking at cancer risk and we're looking at COVID-19. We're looking at challenges that our Caribbean community are facing. Now this is all anonymized. So your information is private and protected. The research data is when it's sent into the team itself, there is no identifier that will identify you by name. So please feel free to share those widely. This is how we will make an even greater impact in health for the Caribbean community. So we'll receive it here and then again. So Dr. Escobar, on to you, please. We'd love to hear your modifications to some of these traditional foods. I was very hungry looking at these slides earlier. <laughs> I know, and it's almost dinner time. So I'm sure that we're gonna run to eat something after this. Um, and what I'm gonna try to do is just to give you like some ideas on how to make it uh, healthier or what foods we can consume uh, most more often. And uh, the first image that we see is Kalalu. And please correct me if I uh, mispronounce anything. Uh, I'm, my, my primary language is, my language is Spanish. So yes, I, I might mess up something <laughs> for sure. But like Kalalu is really good. I mean, it has like tons of nutrients, including vitamin K and it's a powerhouse of nutrients. The problem is that what we add to it, bacon, lots of bacon. So we make it high in fat, but if we decrease the amount of bacon, use uh, turkey bacon or just eliminate the bacon and to add flavor. Um, I don't know if any of you have used like a smoke, a liquid smoke that actually like adds that flavor without the fat. So you can pair that up with a little bit of fish or some eggs and make it like a really nice uh, uh, meal. Then the next time is one of my favorite rotis. And I used to live like in North Miami and we had that time to time and it was really tasty. The problem is that when you see how it's made, they, I mean, they have like a humongous uh, like stove and all of that is like full with the base of the roti. So it's just like way too many carbohydrates, way too many calories. But what we did in our family is that, um, you see that, that little excess part of the roti that is just basically the, the carb, you just peel that out and just don't eat so much of that. Um, or you share it, you know, one roti is enough for two people. And then you pair up with like some nice greens or, um, or a salad and that way you're full because you know, veggies always bring like that um, satisfaction factor as a tidy factor. And then you have, you have a roti, so, and you're happy, you know? And, and don't pair up with the beer because <laughs> that's just way too many calories. Or soda, because we often have orange soda with this, right? And so, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like, yes, you already have a lot, you know, of food and a lot of calories. So it's, it's a cola yeah. champagne. Right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And the roti, we cook with a lot of butter and oil. And I see this is salpuri, but it, so it has yellow splitties inside of it. So that's a good fiber component, but the portion size is always at least three people. It's, it's really big. And I think like portion size is, is one of the things that first come to mind when I'm talking about rotis. And if we can go to the next slide. Sure. Um, so the selfish is really good. It could be very healthy. The fish has many health benefits and it's like a link to um, better heart health. The issue with this is because it, it has a lot of salt. 
So what you need to do, I mean, not a big deal. I mean, in Mexico, in Mexico we have bacalao, which is kind of similar thing. Uh, the, the main thing is see what you're eating in that meal and see what you're eating through your day and decrease the salt in all of those foods. So you're allowed to have the salt that it comes in the fish, no problem. And then of course, pair up with like some nice salad and like some like uh, healthy carbohydrates to make it a, a full balanced meal. And then curry dog, who, who doesn't like curry dog? It's so good. Uh, and, and of course, like curry goat and all the curries. Uh, curries are really good because you have all those spices that have anti-inflammatory properties and they have like an array of health benefits. However, dog is really high in fat. So I will have that as, um, uh, it, has, it has still have some health benefits, but it's like a borderline between slow and raw food. Uh, you know, like right there, like one of those that you want to have like time to time in a special locations. Uh, but you can do it like maybe with, uh, with chicken, that could be very healthy. Uh, goat is not bad. And then uh, now that we've seen a big trend on uh, vegetarian um, diets, tofu could also be another choice. And the other piece is the spice factor. Sometimes, yes, it can increase the metabolism. So lowering the portion size, less oil, because you do render some of that fat from the duck when it's cooked as well. That could be served, that could be used on its own without adding additional oil. What are your thoughts? Yeah? Oh, no, absolutely, yes. Perfect. Uh, and then the fish, uh, this is really good. It, like, it has like, of course, vegetables, everything that has vegetables, I'm down for it. Uh, I think my only uh, suggestion is that the fish is fried. So um, any fans of the uh, air fryer here? <laughs> I'm a big fan of the air fryer. I love it. It, uh, it, it doesn't have like exact the same consistency as like you frying in fat, but you know, it doesn't have calories and it still tastes really good. So you can use that or you can use a grill or baked fish and that way you still have a lot of the flavor, uh, but, and, but this now becomes a go food, something you can have on a regular basis that is gonna be very healthy overall for you. Uh, the next one of Jamaican dishes, uh, another one of my favorite is um, the, the, the Jamaican parties. And uh, I don't know, I have too many, too many good I men for you. you with this. Dr. Escobar, we actually make ours at home. So oh, that's perfect. Turmeric to our dough to make it look like that instead of adding extra fat because a lot there's a lot of lard and a lot of extra fat to make it yes and to actually give it, give it color. But you could add turmeric. It's what we do. And then of course you can of course you can um, be, um, be. then you know that it's not going to have that salt content necessarily. You're you're controlling that piece. We add in sometimes a little bit of veg in there and puree it to give it a little bit of that. Um, you know, more of a smooth texture, so it mimics what the Jamaican patties would taste like. Like it's a fan of fan. Oh, you have to send me the recipe. Oh I my will. God! Yes, me too. Because actually, like that's perfect, and the turmeric is really healthy for you as well. So it's just like a win-win situation. And then the inside of the party, when you make it at home, you can make it with chicken. You can make it with the buffalo beef because that's much lower in fat. You can make it with um, like vegetarian meat, a texturized uh, meat protein. Um, so th there's a lot of more choices when you make it at home. And it's a fun project. I don't know, like, and I know a lot of people like got into cooking with uh, this pandemic. I hope that trend stays because I find cooking uh, relaxing and I think like, the, the family enjoys it. Then when you go out and eat in a restaurant, you, you eat whatever because since you've been eating healthy most of the, the week, then that weekend or that like meal at the restaurant that could be anything because it enters in a well-balanced diet. Exactly. It's a family activity, but it's also part of work-life balance because you can make many of these and leave them in the fridge or freeze them and, and warm them up. <laughs> exactly, because not every day we have time to cook. Exactly. <laughs> and, and I'm guilty of that. And also I think when we cook in, fam in like a family and I think uh, Caribbean people as well as like Latin American people, we're very big in family. Family exactly. is so important and, exactly. and uh, spending time with our loved ones, doing these simple activities 
it's what we will remember for our entire lives. And Absolutely. we want our, our children to grow up and just, you know, do, do their own cooking when they're off to college and we're not there to control their diets. It's also part of us passing on the culture, right? The foods are really what ties that together in so many different ways. Ab absolutely. absolutely. Food, food brings food. people together. Uh, Lewis just mentioned in the chat that we should have a Caribbean cooking show. So maybe that can be part of this project to uh, learn yes. healthy eating. I think that would be fantastic. Absolutely. Dr. Escobar yes. already volunteered her kitchen and her cooking skills. <laughs> Yes, yes. But, I, but I think now you have to volunteer years oh, with that, those Jamaican parties. <laughs> absolutely, we will do that together. <laughs> uh, the next thing that we have here is uh, two items, and I think they can go together very well. What is the steamed cabbage that is like Jamaican that you have all the time, I think. I love adding vegetables to the meals because they add a lot of volume. They make you feel full and they give like colors and, and just like that visual appealing. Uh, when we think about the, the colors of the different vegetables and how they bring um, different nutrients depending on the colors, my thought always is Mother Nature knows what she's doing because, you know, like we are attracted to colors. We are attracted to colorful foods um, and the vegetables are in so, in so many colors that really brings visual appealing and makes our, and make our appetite keep like going once we see like all those beautiful colors. So exactly. any vegetables, any colors added, uh, have the steamed cabbage. I, I really like adding the purple cabbage because I think it just looks so pretty. Uh, yeah. And then you can pair it up with pepperage shrimp. The only thing is be mindful of the fat content that you have. I will use a nonstick pan to cook them. And just like, a, go, and Jamaican dishes are like this. You always go a little heavy on spices. So you don't need a lot of the oil to make it really like tasty. And, you know, I'm not afraid of using fats because there's healthy fats and you need them. I'm just concerned about adding too many of them. Exactly. And uh, let's talk to Cuban dishes, which in South Florida, we see a lot of. Uh, <laughs> and these are just a couple of examples, but there are many. Um, ropa vieja, it, because it's red meat, that will be on the slow foods, uh, because it, you don't want to have like too much uh, red meat in your diet. Um, but I think what I'm most concerned with the Cuban food usually is the portion size. Every time I have Cuban food, if I had to have like one plate for myself, <laughs> then I, I, I really have to like um, box half to go home or like if I buy it to go, that, that serves like for two or three meals. So, because it's just too much. So uh, be aware of the portion sizes. If you want to make uh, the plantains, I love making them boil or baked. That actually decreases all the fat content and it's a really good form of carbohydrate. Uh, my concern always is that we have rice with beans and potatoes and, 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 and like, yeah, so like choose some, you know, like if you're going to have rice and beans, have rice and beans. If you're going to have like plantains, maybe have some plantains and some beans, but don't have it all because that's when, you know, we get in trouble. Exactly. Uh, and especially <laughs> rice can be so stinky so because like the portion like size, size is small. If you want to do half a cup, half a cup, well, I'm sorry, half a cup, a cup, which is a, a good portion size, it's, it's one fourth of a, a smaller plate, like a nine inch plate. So it's not a whole lot. In rice, it's very easy for us to eat like a, a mountain of rice. Mm -hmm. um, with roasted pork, uh, choose which the, the cuts of pork that you want to. Um, there's lots of like lean parts of pork that uh, you can consume and they're healthy for you. Um, and if we can go to the next slide. Dr. Escobar, yeah. the, you said boiled plantain is a good alternative? Yes. Okay. I mean, it's a carbohydrate, so you have to consider that within that fourth of your plate. So you don't want to have that plus rice, plus beans, and, and, and then the beef with the potatoes, that will be like way too many carbohydrates. But yes, it's a good choice and it tastes really good. We mm -hmm. actually serve it to our patients uh, at the hospital that I work at and it's really well accepted. 
And the other, yeah. if you miss the crunchiness of the fried plantains, you could do, use your air fryer. <laughs> oh, oh yes, I forgot to mention that. <laughs> when in doubt, use the air fryer. <laughs> That's right. Um, the arroz con pollo is another favorite. I love it. Uh, my recommendation with that, it will be to just add more chicken and less, and less of the rice. That will like balance it better. And uh, also, and what you might want to do is to pair up with some vegetable because rice and beans have no vegetables. And I think that's an issue with uh, foods, Cuban foods that very often we don't see any vegetables. And then with the croquetas, um, what can I tell you? That's a wall food, you know, just consume it time to time. Uh, and if we can go to the next slide, please. Uh, so now we're going into Dominican Republic foods, and that is mango, and um, I, you know, it's, it's, it's pretty much just like mashed platin, and that's a typical breakfast item. So what I will do is I will use that as my carbohydrate, so a smaller por a portion, half of, uh, like one-fourth of my plate, one-fourth of my plate, and then I'll pair up with some eggs, and then I will just skip the sausage. Because, you know, like I already, you know, like have maybe more calories that I want to. So just eggs and some mango. And then the bollitos de maize. I like the fact that it's corn flour. I think we got to balance out the amount of wheat flours that we have in uh, bread and other things. And like the corn flour, which is like gluten-free and like a balance of both could be good. Uh, my concern with those is that they have sugar. So if you're making at home, just uh, decrease the amount of sugar and, um, and just like uh, be mindful of the amounts that you consume. Uh, and the next slide. Um, so habichuelas guisadas, that, I, that is so good. I mean, that's and, and it's uh, And it's healthy for you and has some vegetables and some herbs and some spices. Uh, just be careful with the, how you make it because I know some people that just tend to be like heavy on the, the fat when they cook all like these dishes, these um, Caribbean dishes. Uh, and then sancocho, I just eat it. It's fine. Uh, be careful. Uh, sometimes they serve it like it's served with a, a lot of rice. So you have to just be careful with the rice because especially the sancocho already has uh, what they call viandas or like the root vegetables. And if you already have the root vegetables then you don't really need the rice. That's something that you can just keep. And if you're cooking it at home, you know, it's nice that you don't have to do that extra cook, extra step or ex extra dish. And then with your avocados, avocados, as um, you mentioned before, they're super, super healthy for you. They have so many benefits, but they also have a lot of fat. So um, just have like a small serving and one small serving is just um, just a couple of tablespoons, okay. just a, a little slice of, of avocado will work. When I see the habichuelas quesadas, it reminds me of a Trinidadian dish. We actually have a stewed red bean, but a lot of times, when you're stewing something, you use sugar and oil and brown sugar, and that's how you brown the meat as well. So avoiding that part of the browning and just natural browning it in olive oil is one great way. But in our stew red beans, we don't actually add any meat to it. It's onions and garlic and scotch bonnet peppers that are flavoring the oil before the beans are added in. So it's a really, really nice way to give a, a natural version. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, I, honestly, I don't have an issue with adding a tiny bit of sugar to, to the dishes uh, because of the culinary aspect. But you know, like the issue is that we add way too much most of the time. That's right, exactly. <laughs> uh, and, um, uh, and see like, uh, we're going back to the same like foods, rice and beans. And this yeah. is great, great source of carbohydrates. Uh, if I'm making it at home, I will probably we will use brown rice. Um, and that's, it, it's an acquired taste. It takes a little time to get used to, but it's uh, healthier for you. And the only thing that we'll look into is portion sizes, portion control, let's see. And no and, coconut milk, right? <laughs> oh, oh, with it, yeah, with yeah. it, with it. 
coconut milk, I actually was, uh, because I love coconut milk. Um, there is, so the one that we usually use to cook these type of dishes, you find it in a can and it's really high in fat. Yeah. But there's another coconut milk that you, you find in the, where all the milk alternative sections and the milk um, is like in the fridge, in the brick fridge uh, section in the supermarket, they have a coconut milk there and you can use that. The texture that uh, of the dish will be a little bit different because the coconut milk does like is, is much lighter because it doesn't have a fat, but then you still have a lot of the flavor of the of the dish without the fat of the coconut milk. I mean, they're, I guess they're both coconut milks. One is just with a lot of fat and another one is <laughs> without that many fat. Um, and then the next one is the fritai. Um, and uh, what can I tell you? That's one of the other things. You could use the air fryer and uh, do it that, well, that, that way and that would be like a, a lot healthier food. Um, but I, I, and I put it there because there's some foods that there's just not really a good substitution. And if you like it, like you like it, have it. It just becomes the wall foods that you can only consume on a special occasion or like maybe on a Sunday. And then again, when you have it is not, you have everything that mm -hmm. you see exactly. and you have big portion sizes, you mm -hmm. still like uh, looked at your portion sizes. So that dish doesn't break down or break uh, all the, or, or, you know, throws away all the effort that you did during the week. Because if you're trying to lose weight, you're trying to help uh, have a healthier heart. If you're trying to do like good things for your body, and you are being very mindful of how much you eat mm -hmm. types of food, but then on a Sunday, in a meal, you consume 3,000 calories, mm -hmm. then, you know, like a lot of that effort is going to just mm -hmm. be out of the window. So uh, just yeah. like normal, normal, normal uh, portion size. Exactly. And if you find it hard to keep track, I recommend using an app on your phone. It helps you. You can just punch in what you're eating. It calculates the calories for you. It tells you the breakdown of how much protein, how much carb, how much fat, how much sugar you probably have for the day. And that gives you a really yeah. nice guideline to go by. And I love it. And I'm not like a big calorie person. Like you have to start, stick to these calories. But I think the app gives you a sense of understanding of uh -huh. how much how much is too much you know and exactly. it's just like a form of education and i really like that aspect of it exactly. uh, or if you are a person that needs to be more structured i think that can give a lot of structure mm -hmm. as well um yeah there are a couple of questions i don't know if you want me to read them yes. now or maybe towards the end and, and, and i think the we can want them now or towards the end it's up to you uh this is the last slide anyways yes. I think we're gonna call okay, it. So until the end. We have a few in there right at the end, so we'll take yeah. yeah. Uh well the this um, this is supposed to be like a, <laughs> it's some like um fried pork. Yeah, it's it's fried pork and again like make it in your air fryer or have a small portion sizes. And again, and you see how we love in our foods <laughs> because I think like Latin America kind of like we're very close, so we're kind of the same. <laughs> but we have a lot of carbohydrates, a lot together. We have, you know, the plantains with the rice and beans. And then on top of that, we have the fried pork. So it's just too much. So cutting portion size is, is one thing. And then we have it with uh, this dish comes with coleslaw, uh, which is like good and, and um, a good addition to it. Um, you know and uh, it's pickle. The pickles are amazing because actually this is something I learned also in the focus groups. It's very similar to a lot, a lot of the other islands. Like we always have chutney or some kind of a pickled tomato. Mm -hmm. So we call it chip chip and other things and, a, you know, some kind of a hot sauce condiment to go with the food. Or so this one's a little sour. I think it, is there lime or lemon in it? Yes, there's sour in it. Yes, so we do that as well. There. And that is a great healthy way to really add flavor without the extra fat. That and, makes you uh, so good. Thank you. <laughs> everything that is fermented and pickled will be good for your gut. Which, mm -hmm. like having a healthy gut, when you have a healthy gut, your cravings for sugar are going to decrease. Absolutely. So it's a good thing to have. 
So I yeah. just want you to know, Dr. Escobar, when we get off here, I'm going to tweet that a doctor told me that pick leaves <laughs> is good for my guts. <laughs> that is suitable. Thank you so much. It is. The salt. Watch the salt. Okay, don't have salt. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, and the last thing is the, the soup. Um, Jumu. Jumu, yeah, mm -hmm. thank you for that. And uh, <laughs> this is overall really healthy. The only thing is like, it's made out with beef. Uh, so because it's red meat, that's something that you want to have like maybe once a week, red meat, I'm saying. So that's again, one of those um, slow foods, but like really like not several times a week, but like rather like one time a week. Uh, but like, uh, all, like all the pumpkin, which is, today is the perfect day to talk about pumpkins. Yes, mm -hmm. right? Exactly. Yes. Uh, the good thing, it, so the good thing about soup jumu growing up in a Haitian household, we primarily had it for New Year's, right? Because it's like a celebratory, wow. it's like a New Year's tradition where you have soup jumu. Maybe, maybe like a couple of times a year we would have it. But then lately I've been seeing my mom has been cooking it more. So I have to tell her to maybe back off and just stick to the <laughs> celebratory. Right. If you don't want to tell her directly, then show her the video. Yes. yes. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, wonderful. So we are just thrilled. My goodness. I hope you had a chance to participate in some of the surveys. The intercept survey allows you to look at all of the materials and you rate to see this may help you to change some of your food and beverage choices. We uh, have our hearts and souls in this project because we want our Caribbean community to be healthy, to live long, to reduce and eliminate all the complications of all these diseases that are impacting us more than other communities in many ways. So this is our chance to kind of come together and really ensure that our voices are heard, that we make an impact together that we help to realign policies and resources where they're needed so that we can make that impact. The mm -hmm. questionnaires, are, remember, those are the longer surveys. You do have the option to stop and save and go back as you will get um, mm -hmm. an email code sent to you if you wanted to resume it. So we would really appreciate all of your input on that because that really helps us to structure some of the programs that we have in the community. And then remember, the Creole versions are coming soon. If you would like to support the project in any way, we do have a text to give option. You can text NSUCDHNOP to 41444 to support us. And please, now is the time for questions. So Elkin, please bring them on. <laughs> so let me, okay, pull them up. So I, earlier someone commented they would love the video to share with their family. <clears throat> so it was really great. So we will email, um, we will email you the link to the video, but also it will be posted on United Way's website. Uh, next week at unitedwaybroad.org and also be posted on NSU's uh, website as well. A uh, uh, question Lacey had was for efficient digestion, it is recommended to eat fruits with your meal. So I guess it was more of a statement, just as recommended to eat fruits with your meal. Uh, another question is this cooking, cooking healthy, unsaturated fats modify the saturation or makes them unhealthy? So does cooking healthy fats modify the saturation or makes them unhealthy? They're still gonna be healthy. Uh, I think like one oil that I can think that uh, is better to eat like uh, to add to the food after, afterwards, after cooking is olive oil. But overall, you know, it, it's, uh, it, it's better to eat, to cook with that type of fats. Yeah, the saturated fats are not great for you at all, you know, so we want to avoid saturated fats, unsaturated, or as, as Dr. Escobar mentioned, extra virgin olive oils, those are excellent ways to really cook the base of these traditional foods. And the one thing I'm going to add about fats is I sometimes like to add fats. I, I cook with a nonstick pan, very little fat, and then right towards the end, when it's time to almost start with food, I add a little bit of, egg of uh, butter or a little bit of ghee or a little bit of olive oil because when I add it to the end, it will stay there. All the flavor is going to be there, but it's really going to be just like a little tiny bit of it. Exactly. And just to reiterate what we said earlier, if you really want something fried, if you have access to an air fryer, if you want to oven bake it or oven fry it, if you will, you can do that as well. Or spritz your pan with a little bit of olive oil spray rather than even using those copious amounts of oils that we typically use. 
I just ordered another air fryer today on Best Buy. They had a sale. <laughs> oh, look at that. We're advertising for them. <laughs> yeah, they had a sale. <laughs> I love it. Any other questions? No, I think that's it. Let me look. Wonderful. Yep, that's it. Well, thank and, you and so we... much. Yep, that's it. Okay. Well, thank you all so much for joining us today. It's incredible. This is one of many in a series that will come your way. You know, Dr. Escobar and myself, we will be cooking. <laughs> That's yes. Recording that and making sure that these videos are sent out. So we will have a lot of fun. We'll have some interaction there. So feel free. If you have some foods in mind that you'd like to see cooked or alternatives that we discussed today that you would like to see highlighted in one way or another, email us at caribbeanhealth.nova.eu and we're happy to feature those. Thank you all so much. Special thanks again to Elkin and the entire United Way team. We're so thrilled to have your support. Dr. Escobar, thank you for joining me today. It's great that we have a Dr. Kieran C. Patel College of Osteopathic Medicine team leading this. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye, everyone, and thank you. Bye.